We say things that don't mean anything, but thanks for listening. Yeah. Greetings, everybody. Welcome to We Say Things, episode 158. My name is Suns Fan. Joining me is Cinderin. Yo. Welcome. It's me. Welcome to the podcast, Cinderin. Thank you, Shannon. It's been Thank a week so since we talked because we yes. don't have any kind of a social life together outside of the podcast. Isn't that right? That's partially correct. Okay. Thank you for being technically correct. Thank you. Uh, thank you also to our amazing In Bruges tier patrons, who we will shout out now, who give us money every month, just like you can at patreon.com slash we say things. Thank you to Joey. Mr. Cakes will see you in Arlington. Look for the tangos. Okay. Arc Warden players are a menace to the world and should be RP cataclysm comboed into the shadow realm. Completely agree with that. Uh, Obi-Wan can blow me. The British Dota scene sucks more than this name. Sharing a birthday with another person is just stats, not even taking into account more likely birthdays, not an ad. <laughs> <laughs> I cover my ears during scary moments too. Oscar Seeker, The Meals, Roundy 3, GFFA thinks that the silver bullet for the matchmaker issues that Jeff Hill described is, wait for it, way more active players. Disco Farm D. Uh, this is my least favorite one. Stoogey, stooge, stooge. I'm looking you dead in the eye and telling you I want it. I want it bad. Hashtag. Is that saying no tall cinder man? Not all. Not or all. no tall. <laughs> I think it says not all. Not all cinder man. Hakuna Matata lasts because it gets to 48 degrees Celsius here. Commander Donut. Chakar's not an asshole anymore, for now. Milan, Miami, the Mega Pope, and the Round Mound of Rebound, which is actually, I don't know if you know this, Cinder, that is a nickname for a basketball player that is retired oh. by the name of Charles Barkley. And the reason they gave him that name is because he was fat and he could rebound. Go ahead. So it was endearing, mostly. Kind of, sure. 50-50. Also, thank you to... Okay, let me see if I do this as well as you did last week. Light loquaciously licks lemons laughing like losing ludicrously little lucidity limits TI in New Zealand. Very good. Zan Xavier, Nate Thicko 01 Hamscroats, Bacon, Shark TM, Freshly Seasoned Goat Balls, Janie, Dop, Nothing to See Here, Underscore Man, Guitar Strings recommends importing Flux from Han. Do you want to recommend something else? Yes, sweet Yvremont, can we get Seb on the podcast? Keep asking every week. Ben Broomhead just wants a faceless arcana. Is that so much to ask? Also, maybe some map changes wouldn't hurt. Plus one. Pitch black. Wouldn't aftertaste. Anonymous. And finally, Pradox is a seemingly absurd or contradictory statement or proposition which, when investigated, may prove to be well-founded or T. Uh, I'm guessing that's... That's got to be Niebling. That's obviously Niebling, but he it ran obviously out of room. Paradox. I wonder what it says in the end. Yeah, well, we'll never know. <laughs> maybe Thank next you, week. People. Next week <laughs> Thank you again to our patrons. We appreciate character it. Character limit, guys. Don't forget. Yes. Uh, okay. Let's get started with the news of the week, Cinderman. Uh, the PGL Arlington Major talent has been announced, uh, which yes. includes, I'll just name everybody so I'm not leaving anybody out. We got, <laughs> I'll talk about this one myself, of course. Sajadine, uh, Natty, both being the hosts. Uh, James Banks, who I haven't gotten to work with uh, yet. Uh, he's going to be the content slash stage. Then Slacks will but be... But you've never met him at WePlay either. No, I was not invited to WePlays during that time. Oh. Remember, okay. you and Slacks got me invited to the Animator. And that's when I... You guys revitalized Did we? my career. Yeah, thanks to you. You're welcome. Uh, Slacks will be doing content. And then for analysts slash casters, we got Jenkins, Gods, Lizard, Lacoste, Sheepstick. Great to see her at an event. Uh, Trent Pax, my boy. And then casting will be Ma, Lyrical, Gareth, Black, Ares, John X Fire, Danog. I don't, is that how you actually say his name? I'm not sure. Danog. Uh, yeah. B Cop, MLP. Of course, mm. I got to meet uh, John X Fire and MLP at the the major. And then observing Scriff, Weppus, PTP, and my boy Aosin. So, first of all, why are you not uh, casting at this event, Cinderin? I was not invited. So there, 
There were some people questioning why you were not invited among other people. First of all, and I'm going to talk about the one that we're going to get to eventually. Uh, the thing I like about PGL, and I'm not just saying this, and you will understand why I'm not just saying this once I'm done talking. Uh, mm-hmm. I like that they kind of go outside the box. I like the freshening up of talent because there was some pushback with this, uh, which we'll get to. But at the same time, like the Stockholm major was a lot of the same people like you and me and others that were invited to a lot of other stuff as well. And people complain about that. So it feels like there's no, you know, pleasing everybody, so to speak. Yeah. But I I like the fact that they're giving like some of these newer people uh, some limelight. And I'm not just saying. I think I think in particular for this event, there's a lot of the talent that covered the SEA DPC here. Mm. Um, which I think also worked with PGL. So they've obviously got, you know, some firsthand experience working with the, the new people and seeing how they work on a broadcast. And um, I think this is going to be a really good lineup. And I think it's going to be a great show. Like, I, I understand everybody has their personal preferences, right? Like, I got some messages. People are like, why aren't you invited? Man, we're going to miss you. You're the best. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, blah, blah, blah. That sounded really arrogant. That's not what I was going for. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I'm just so blah, fucking blah, good blah, at blah, what I man. Do. You're the best, whatever. No, but like... I agree. I think it's really good to have variety. Uh, I think it's good to see some new people get a chance. I think also keep in mind, like our frame of reference for feedback from the community is going to be Reddit, right? And a natural thing that happens on Reddit a lot is that like almost by chance, certain times, certain things kind of just like gravitate in one direction or the other. So depending on when the post was made or uh, who was up at the time, things might be skewed more in a direction than they actually are. And the vast majority of the audience don't read Reddit anyway. So, True. like, the the loud, the loud minority will have their opinions, but most people will not have said anything yet. And then we'll see what the viewer numbers are, what the general feedback is after the tournament. I think everybody's going to do a great job. Um, and I'm especially excited for Nikki. I think that's the main exciting thing for me is to see her host. Uh, I know you're going to talk more about that. I know she hosted some Valorant. Uh, and obviously she knows a lot about Dota. She's played the game forever. So um, compared to what I found interesting, which is obviously, I guess this is part of what you're going to talk about too, but I saw some of the comments were like, man, she only got in because of nepotism with Suns fan, blah, blah, blah. Uh, or, you know, he's he's like... He's like pulling some strings to get Nikki in. Um, you know me. And like a lot of a lot of the other hosts that we've had at previous events, including Ti, have had way less Dota experience, or no or, Dota experience, literally, or n- literally no Dota experience, yeah. and in some cases, probably a similar amount of hosting experience. To be honest, like, so I guess the only reason there's the pushback there is here is that it's your wife and. That's it. <laughs> so, well, first for your but sake. But now you can tell your story. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll get to that in a sec. I, I want to ask. Okay. I mean, do you want to answer? I'm trying to think if there's any reason you would not want me to ask you this. Mm-hmm. I don't see any reason, so I'm going to say it. Okay. W- were you going to go to the major if you were invited? No. Yes. That's. I was. And I, I was going to. I was going to sit out this one event. I think there's a couple of other people that did the same, right? I think yes. some other people got invited and canceled. Uh, I think in most cases for people, when we skip events, it's because of like fatigue or it's a lot of time. Like we spend quite a lot of time away from home, so obviously every time we go to events. Oh shit! Okay, pausing the video because the dog's going crazy. Uh, we were just discussing how. Uh... Oh, right. Why certain talent Some people don't attend events, go. right? Right. So usually when talent decline events, it's either because uh, of bad rates, which I would say is the rarest reason that we don't reach a, an agreement with the organizer. Uh, most of the time it's because talent either <clears throat> have other commitments, so just overlaps with something else they are doing in their real life, or... Uh, a lot of the times also because like when you travel as much as especially some talent do, I think the ones that cover the entire DPC, for example, are away from home for like six weeks straight. Uh, then they go home for a little bit and then they do the major. And then they go home for a little bit again and then the next season starts. So at some point you're going to get some fatigue. It's going to kick in and it's taking a toll at home on like your personal life or whatever. So sometimes it's just 
you're gonna have talent that you want to see at every single event eventually skip on something because they need a break or they're doing something else. Yeah. Uh, so in my case, I was going to cancel this event to have a better like work home balance, to have a bit more time at home because I've got, been away a lot and I'm gonna be like the, I had other real life stuff as well that just happened where I was also away. And obviously in my case where you have a dog, for example, or in other people's case where they would have like a child, if you leave your significant other with all of the burden at home for a long time, that's obviously really stressful for them. So it's about finding like, you know, a balance that's fair. Um, I think among our talent, who has kids? Trent. I think Trent. Slacks. Trent Lex, Pyrian. Yeah. Is that it? It's pretty rare. Yeah. I think none of those do like every event, right? Uh, but Slax does a lot, and he does skip an occasional event. I think probably partially for that reason, I would imagine, without knowing exactly. Uh, yes, um, I would say yes. But yeah, that's probably the case. Uh, but he's back in business for this, and that should be a lot of fun. I love when Slax makes content, so yeah, he's got my kind good. of humor. It's bizarre. I love bizarre shit. So, but yeah. So going back to Nikki getting invited. Um, Honestly, the reception was generally good. Obviously, there's going to be some comments, like you said, with the whole nepotism thing, which, like, from an outside perspective, I can understand why that's the first thing that drops in your head. But I'll just kind of lay out the, the reasons why it's 100% not possible for it to be nepotism. Uh, the first, well, first, you kind of mentioned this talent really doesn't have much to say on getting other talent hired, unless it's like somebody that you're casting with. Uh, and I would say of all the organizers, like the big tournament organizers, I think PGL will probably, like you would have less impact on them making decisions than like an ESL. Like maybe you can get, like you helped, like we play is probably on the other end of the spectrum where you helped me get a gig there with Slacks, right? That's the closest it's going to get. Um, and the hilarious, <laughs> the reason is a hundred percent not nepotism. She was invited and you know this and she was yeah, invited 10 days before me. And the only reason I was inv <laughs> invited is because I'm not going to name them because I don't know if they want to be named, but somebody that you would expect to be invited declined to come to the event. So I was the backup. So I wasn't even originally invited. And on top of that, I don't even think they know <laughs> that we're, we're a thing. It's possible that they don't know we're oh, husband Oh, that would wife, be really funny, actually. Which yeah. just adds more hilarity to the whole nepotism argument. But I wonder how many analysts would have had to cancel before I got invited. <laughs> I guess we'll never know. We'll never know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, obviously, yeah, like funny. you said, she's I mean, had it's a, nepotism that you got invited in the end, though. Of I, course. I bet they were like, we need another caster. And then Nikki was like, hey, you should try Sun's <laughs> Yeah, she's got a lot of sway, of course. Uh, but yeah, like you said, she's had a long history in Dota. Obviously a lot of it is behind the scenes with like captain's draft and, uh, being talent agent for, well, Moonduck and then a lot of pro players. Uh, so she's had a lot when it comes more to, to do with Dota than people know. Yeah. So a lot of that's behind the scene and then talent counter-strike Valorant, etc. So she hasn't gotten to do anything for Dota, but she's been wanting to do that. So this will be her big chance and I think she'll do great. Don't fuck it up, Shannon. I, if I'm on panel with her, I'm gonna. You finally got her invited to a Dota event. Don't fuck it up. I'm gonna ruin the panel when I'm on it. Like, <laughs> part of me it's really uncomfortable. Part of me hopes. To the test. Part of me hopes that it'll happen, and the other parts like probably good idea if that does not happen. Cause yeah, it'll. I can make things you, very you awkward, can't control yourself. very fast, and. You know me, dude. I can't. Like, I'm, you can't stop. It's yourself. like this thing in my head. You got to say it. You got to say it. You got to say it. It's funny. It doesn't matter if it makes her uncomfortable. Say it. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. So. Oh god. So, <laughs> so yeah, looking forward to working with uh, everybody there. I'll be casting with uh, your replacement. Cinderin <laughs> is Jenkins. My replacement. Yes, it'll be me oh. and Jenkins. Which I know some people don't like that combo. Uh, Try to rein him in. You, for example. I'll rein him in. That's how fucking crazy Jenkins is. So That is actually true. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's talk a bit more about the Arlington Major and teams that may not be coming slash kind of substitutions and whatnot. So the first of which is Extreme Gaming. This one was the weirdest. Uh, they have dropped out of not only the major, but because their visas could not be 
filled on three players, they're just going to replace them and go through the TI qualifiers. This is fucking crazy. Does that mean... I, I'm trying to wonder why... So they can't qualify for TI, obviously. They could have gone with three subs technically, though, right, in the major. So why not Wasn't go down that just road? just one player that didn't get his visa? Wasn't it just the carry? Oh, am I thinking of a diff- Oh, I'm sorry. You, I'm thinking of Fnatic. You're thinking maybe. of Fnatic. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. get there. But Extreme Gaming had one player fail three visa meetings. So he didn't get a visa for you uh, to go to the US. And then instead of getting a stand-in, which other teams have, they just cancel it completely, which... Like, I'm trying to wrap my head around how this makes sense unless there's something that isn't told. I feel like the other four will definitely want to go compete with a stand-in. You're still a really good team. You could find another, another either, a, either a local U.S. player that also speaks Chinese. There's plenty of those that are pretty high MMR. Or, you know, maybe you could get another Chinese player to get a visa. Or maybe somebody still has a valid one from... I think some of the Chinese players might have long-time visas, which is why some players are struggling and some aren't. Because you can obtain like visas for the U.S. that last for quite a while, right? Yeah, but TI is not. At least you in, can the other way around. TI is not in freaking America. So let's say they go with four players to the U.S. and they fill in a position one. Mm-hmm. Do they? Can they even get enough points to make it to TI? Is that the whole point? Is that they they didn't have enough chance to get into TI anyway? Uh, they might be mathematically unable to make TI off points if the only get four. They would get four fifth of the points from playing with a stand-in, right? I think that's how it works. So I don't know if that applies if it's a I'm visa sure. issue, though, right? Aren't there exceptions I, for that? I don't know. Okay, I guess it's I'd... just a shame they aren't there. This is one of the teams I really wanted to see on LAN because so yeah, they, they are so super strong in the Chinese region. So they've so. just dropped out completely. So that leaves they just dropped. one less team, which, yeah. I mean, I guess we haven't heard official word, but if it's anything like the Stockholm Major, they will not be replaced. because They are not replaced. They announced the groups. So They did announce the groups, but they didn't technically say that. Uh, but yeah. you can obviously... I feel like you wouldn't announce the groups until you had the last Well, team. there's no way to make it fair anyway, right? Because... Why would you give free points to like one region over another or give them a chance versus another? You, you kind of have to just have one less team, as sucky yeah. as that is. It's just kind of the reality. Yeah. Uh, but Fnatic, they are going to be missing three players. The yeah. only ones that got visas were Jabs and DJ. And this is a team I was looking forward to uh, casting because, like, first of all, I'm surprised that Raven hasn't Raven, I guess we haven't had US tournaments in a while, but. Yeah. I feel like he's been he's been to TI for sure in Seattle, I feel like. Maybe that was Vancouver. I don't even know. But uh he has definitely played he played at TI six. That was in Seattle. Yeah. So that's, I remember that. This is very surprising. People were making memes that Raven looked like he was the child of me and Era and we were playing at that TI. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Uh, it was so funny. That is good. <laughs> so they're gonna need to get subs. Uh, and then you have Pure, who is on... That's Entity, right? He yes. is going to be replaced by Saberlight. Because is he, that confirmed? It's on Liquipedia, and there was a screenshot okay. of something. So Why are they subbing out their carry for an offlane player? I feel like they would have had other options. Tomato right? would be available, right? Yeah, I think he might... He's rumored to be playing with another team, right? Fnatic, I think. Maybe. Oh, okay. So maybe they wanted him and they couldn't get him because, man, imagine, man, you're just a, if you're a good NA player right now, your stocks are so high for this major. Like everybody needs stand ins. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> That's great. Uh, and then Amazing. on top of that, there's a rumor that Anna might be standing in for RNG. Um, yeah. So he could have also stood in for extreme gaming, right? With that logic because mm. he speaks Chinese. So Anna could have definitely played for XMG or XG, sorry. Um, so i mean based on the information so far this obviously isn't great news but it's still like in terms of amount of teams and amount of players it's more than stockholm major right which uh it it could be what happened in stockholm didn't they lose like two teams or something two full rosters was it that bad okay maybe i'm it might have been that bad actually no maybe maybe you're right actually i just (sighs) I just wish, like, obviously I speak for everyone when I say this, so it's kind of preaching to the choir, but I just wish we didn't have this many visa problems, and especially if we do have them, 
it would at least be nice if it was consistent, right? I just feel so random. Yeah, and what people get to go and who don't. It's like, it what is. officer are you getting on the day? It's well, just it, luck. It's just like when it's you go. Stupid. It's like when I go to the airport in another country and they look at my passport. It's literally up to that one person, pretty much, right? They could fuck yeah. you. Um, and I've seen some backlash towards PGL. And do you guys not understand how visas work? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't think PGL could have probably done much more than they have, PGL, especially considering what they usually do for events with invitation letters, yeah. like legitimacy papers that they provide for you to try oh. to get a visa. I would imagine PGL did what they could. It's not honestly. just that, though. Like PGL is not an American company, so that already puts yeah. you at a disadvantage to some degree. So the way that the only way that this could have been expedited, and I, I don't even know if this happen maybe this did and it still didn't go through i doubt it because valve has never done anything like this but valve would basically have to be the one to start these visa processes to get them in the door but mm -hmm. the issue of course is like the scheduling of like the dpc like these dates were somewhat late announced like in the grand scheme of things so that would provide extra time for valve to do something but on top of that they don't know who's going until they're qualified which yes makes it even more difficult so the only I, company I think that could have done something ways, that's well. the that's the biggest thing that can be improved here aside from obviously I, I mean i'm not going to say the players are never at fault aren't partially at fault because if you're doing these interviews really poorly and you're just saying dumb shit then i mean it's your own fault right but i would like to think that at least most players if not all of them kind of know what to do and don't trip over their own feet in the visa office and just ruin their own chances so I feel like the biggest change that we can have that will help avoid this, aside from obviously international politics that we have no control over, is to give more time. I feel like these qualifiers need to be shorter. Mm. Like this is a this is another benefit. We've talked about this in the past that we think the DPC shouldn't last six weeks, where you play one game a week or whatever, uh, sometimes two. Imagine if the DPC was four weeks instead. It was more condensed, more intensive. There would be more overlap of games between regions. That's the trade-off. But then you'd have two additional weeks to get visas, and you would get more third-party tournaments. I just think, for me, the trade-off is not even close. I, I mean, just think it's way better. So, Will two weeks make a difference here, though? If you think, like, from yeah. just the visa perspective? Because some I of these so, players yeah. were denied three times already in this time frame. Yeah, so right? a couple of them were denied three times, right? But I think a lot of... The, the ones that get denied three times, I mean, I, I guess there was nothing to be done, perhaps. But I think even if, like, let's say you do get denied three times, it, it is probably still kind of rushed, right, between the attempts. So maybe if you had two more weeks, you know, you get declined the first time, you get declined the second time. Then this two-week span that you have can maybe be used to, okay, guys, we're on our last leg here. We have last chance to get in. Can Valve help? Can we get some sort of help from the U.S., whatever, right? But you're just under so much time pressure here that I think some of the bureaucracy that could help you doesn't have time to be executed. You're just YOLOing the third try, right? So I think in that end of things, for the last try, I think the two weeks make a big difference in trying to get additional help. For the first two, maybe not so much. But yeah, I would like to think that with two more weeks, we would have had more players there. I feel like that's pretty likely. Yeah, definitely possible. Uh, let's... I'm going to bring up a graphic on the screen. We'll talk about the groups that were announced here. Um, so, group. I don't like this color scheme. Can I just say that? This is a Lakers color scheme, Cinderin. Kind correct me if I'm wrong. These are, what's it called? These are complementary colors, right? No. Uh, blue, blue and yellow. That's not blue, blue and orange. That's not blue and yellow. Orange and purple ish. Yes, blue and yellow. Oh, wait. It's it's black and gold, right? Blue and orange, I think, are complementary. So These are kind of close to complementary colors. No, it colors, is. These right? are, like, some people confuse this for Phoenix Suns color. These are Laker colors. This is, like, kind of a uh -huh. yellowish, golden, like, it's a little bit orange, I guess, but the purple is definitely uh, more Lakers than the Suns purple. So, yes. So, I think not the great. reason it can work on a team jersey compared to this is that this like with the sheer amount of logos and how big a part of the image is orange and then all of the text or all of the teams and logos are like i don't know what you would call this color it's like somewhere between blue and purple right it's purple um it just it, it's just a bit straining to look at i don't know if it's just for me i feel like this is an 
Like it's just too bright and vibrant, and then it's also complimentary color. <laughs> I like just had a two minute conversation about the fucking colors of this graphic. Who gives that shit? You gotta talk Let's... about something, man. <laughs> Good. That's actually unreal. You're Whatever, dude. That long, man. I really dislike the color scheme. Are these complimentary colors? Is that purple? No, it's violet. Is that blue? I don't know the colors. Anyway, Man, we just keep talking about it. Let's talk about the groups instead of the colors. Uh, the top group, I which can't is read them, though. I'm blinded. Now. <laughs> the top group, which is in purple uh, with an orange background, is Royal Never Give Up, Outsiders, Thunder Awaken, Team Liquid, Talon, Quincy Crew, OG, Fanatic, and PSG LGD. So this is the group that has eight teams, and then nine, three, six, nine teams, and then the group that has eight, so one less. For group B is Tundra, Boom, EG, Aster, Navi, Beast Coast, Spirit, and Entity. So this is interesting because similar to the Stockholm Major, uh, actually, let me look at the what the format is. Is, is it the same where pretty only sure. one team gets eliminated? I'm pretty sure it's similar. No, five teams get eliminated in the group stage. Oh, it's the bottom three of each group, uh, except yes. one is default. So if I do, if I remember correct, Sweden or mm -hmm. Stockholm Major, only EG got eliminated, right? That was the whole yes. meme. Only one team. Yeah. So this time it's going to be five, which is pretty big. Um, All right. So I obviously the one last team makes Group B more desirable. I would assume. But at the same time, it's really hard to gauge what's a better group because so many players are getting subbed in, right? There's a lot of wild cards going on here. Yeah, I think a lot of people, the general consensus that I've seen, not from the pros, but just from the community, is that group A is stronger. Um, and I think in a lot of cases, the thing that tips the scales is that it's the group with PSG, LGD, and OG, right? So previous major winners and LGD in the same group. But the thing is, LGD got fourth seed out of China. So you got a seed based on the DPC, right? I think that's what they always do. So I'm assuming Extreme Gaming should have been in Group B and would be considered on stats the stronger team because they got second in China, right? Whereas LGD got fourth. Or did they get third? Whatever. Uh, XG got higher. Do you actually think that it's like hard, hard coded is the right word, but you don't think they have any like wiggle room? in choosing groups? you think it's actually just up to a formula? I think, okay, so my take on it is that if you don't follow the DPC, you need to have a transparent, at least in my opinion, seating should be transparent. So I know that TI hasn't always done that, for example, but now that we have the DPC, I feel like we have a system for seating. So if you want to seed teams on different metrics, then I think you should announce it. Like if you want to give OG first seed no matter what, because they won the last major, I think teams would find that to be fair. Right, like you, you won the last big international event that could give first seed, um, but there just needs to be some sort of a metric then, right? Like maybe you say the top four, or top eight of the previous major gets seeded in in that order if they qualify. That's the other thing; you don't even necessarily qualify if you won the last major, right? Mm. They did this time, but they won't necessarily do it every time. Um, so, so I think like if you want to seed easily, you just seed based on DPC rankings or DPC placement in the qualifier, and then you shuffle the groups around with uh, the regions based on that or something like that. So, um, But yeah, I, I would agree overall looking at this. I think Group A is probably a bit stronger, uh, but that's specifically not because like the eight teams in Group B are weaker than eight teams in Group A. It's because there's missing that juggernaut. In my opinion, I think Extreme Gaming would have been very good. Um, so that to me makes that group look a little bit weaker, but... I think teams like Navi and Spirit have the potential to go really deep. Um, and people often turn like a blind eye to, S uh, to SA. They got two top sixes last major, you know? Mm. I don't think there's any team here that you're like, okay, this is clearly going to get crushed. I think on people's minds, the biggest underdog is probably Entity, right? Because of lack of experience and a stand-in. But even they beat some big teams in EU qualifiers to get there. So I mean, but Fnatic... It's going to be really interesting... Fnatic having three subs is going to be pretty massive. Yeah, right? they're probably the weakest team on paper, actually, with that factor. But who knows? Yeah, you never know. There's going to be a bunch of wild cards. Uh, something else I want to mention that is uh, design-related. Let's just wrap back around to our original conversation uh -huh. of this graphic. If you zoom in a bit, I'm noticing mm -hmm. like this little outline of like fingerprints. Do you see that? Yep. What, yep. what does that mean? What is that? It's a fingerprint. Um, 
I think they looked at this image and they were like, wow, these complementary colors are too much. So we're going to just put in some random yellow. Or maybe it's to make a point at, it's really hard to get a visa. So it's like a jab at that with the fingerprint. Here, the fingerprint here are that some you have to fingerprints get to, US. Uh, to help out. Yeah, use these yeah. fingerprints. Hint, hint. Yeah, it's got to be that. Okay. I like that. Mm. Okay, so that's the Arlington. I, I have no idea what the, what the idea is here. That is the honest. Arlington Major. That's what design is, Shannon, sometimes. Design is to just make things look interesting. And then when you ask for a reason, you just need to come up with some random bullshit. Uh, it symbolizes, uh, you know, whatever. So. So. But it does look nicer than if they weren't there. I mean, this doesn't need to be a real long convo, but do you expect there to be a patch before the major? Uh, when's the major again? It's, I leave in five days. No. There's not going to be a patch. Really? But I think it's going to drop the date and... You don't think there's going to be like a mini patch? I'm not talking no. about a big one. No. Really? Not anymore. I thought there might be one after the DPC, but after a few days passed and it wasn't there, it's not going to happen. They're That's not going true. to patch the game five days before the event. That would be great. I wish they would do it the day of the event and just really spice things up. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, Marcy uh, has half damage now. Oh, yes. Actually, another thing that annoys me the most about her is dispose the the cast range. Just doesn't seem like mm. it's working correctly. Just always seems like it's longer than it shows. That's oh, that's the case for every spell in Dota, right? Pretty much. There's like that acquisition range thing. Uh, it's And the reason it stands out so much on Marcy is that her spell is short range. So it feels like the relative difference between a spell that has a thousand range and then acquisition range and a spell that has Sinaran, 150. I understand what you, you're you know saying what I mean? and I did think of that, but uh -huh. I think this is a bug. I'm just pointing it out. I, think this I is don't a, think it's bugged. I think this is a bug that everybody knows about, but nobody oh. is calling it a bug officially. I, I think you're right. Everybody loves Marcy so much that nobody wants to point out if the hero is bugged and overpowered. I hear complaints all think, the time. I think so you're onto something there. I'm, I'm listening to the back channels of all the pros. They, they don't like Dispose. Okay. Mm. it's too good I, I find that very believable it's too good okay let's go on to our sap segment playing dota 2 requires skills like multitasking pattern recognition mm. strategizing leadership and social skills sap is looking you're blocking my vision with your cursor sap Sorry. is looking for exactly those skill sets in various areas like development and technology sales and consulting Put your time st time stamp. Put your stamp on SAP's market <laughs> leading <laughs> portfolio used by 94% of the world's 500 largest companies and bring your skills to work with the latest technologies. Join a dynamic and diverse group of people and develop your career. Check out SAP's open positions at jobs.sap.com by clicking the link in the description of the video or the audio. Okay. Question time. Do I give my question first again? You don't have to. I can go I will. first. It's okay. I don't what's think the, it makes a difference. What's the score right now? Is it 3-1? Uh, you're 2-1, and one, right? What? I'm 3. Are you 3-1? Yeah. Did you get another one? Oh, fuck me, man. I'm never catching up. Never. I was up 3-0 for like a split second. Okay. Um, so here's my question for you today. There's an outdated meme that Chinese Dota equals Farm Fest, as you know, um, which was the case once upon a time, but has developed quite a lot since then <clears throat> so you're, you're familiar with that but how many chinese players are actually in the top four of lane creeps killed total is it a none b2 c3 or d all four is this for this patch uh it's since the is it since 7.07 .07, what is it that they okay, have stats from that since back then and it's it's very long ago the it's uh big history so you said top four for what again creeps killed uh lane creeps killed lane what how is many it? are oh how many lane creeps killed top four are chinese zero two three or four if it was like the last year i would have said zero uh yeah fuck it zero that is incorrect would you like a second guess one that was not one of the options. You lose. The <laughs> options were zero, two, three, and four. Two. Thank you for listening. <laughs> what is it? That is incorrect. <laughs> three. 
No, that is also incorrect. Four. Congratulations, Janice. The correct answer is all four. <laughs> and it. in order, the four players with most killed lane creeps since we have the stats from are Paparazzi, number one. Number two is Somnus. Number three is SCCC, actually. Hmm. And number four is Monet. And now another fun fact is that the next five players are not from China on that ranking. So then fifth is Resolution, sixth is Limp, seventh is Miracle, eighth is No One, and ninth is Ace. Okay. So you got top me. four belong to China barely. And then All right. Will Cinderin just random. bring back the lead from 3-1 to 3-2? Is that called bringing back the lead? Isn't that called catching up? He's going to bring back that lead. Who has the lowest win percentage this patch after purchasing an Aghanim Scepter? Lowest win percentage after purchasing yeah. Aghanim Scepter. Arc Warden. Techies. Tinker. Lone Druid. Dude, what do they do? The Arc Warden is the one that makes is Runeforge, right? Is that what it's called? I can tell you all of them off of memory here. So no. Tinker is Arc the Warden, laser. Yeah. Okay. Tinker is the what's the laser called? It's the Shrink Ray. Shrink Ray, yeah. Uh, Arc Warden is the Spark Wraith will spawn more Spark Wraiths when you activate it. Techies is his Oh yeah, Runeforge got removed. Techies is the his damn, what's that spell called that he has now? The taser. You can mm -hmm. use it on allies, and it does damage. And Lone yeah. Druid, obviously, no leash for the bear. So are you saying one of those has the lowest win rate, or are you saying yeah, one of them can, is the lowest can, among okay, them? This isn't a clue, but the hero, Marcy, has zero ags purchased in the entire game. Yeah, okay. Thank you for the And hint. I literally can't tell you what her ags does. Actually, yes, oh, I Oh, wait, can. that's true. She actually does have <laughs> She does have an ags. It has never been purchased. <laughs> so yes, uh, these aren't necessarily and this is a ticketed games, right? Yes. Dude, would anyone ever buy Techies eggs? Arc Warden, <sighs> Techies, Tinker, Lone Druid. All right, I'm gonna say Arc Warden. You are correct. This is a bait. There's no way I got two in a row. You got it correct. I don't know what to tell you. Three to two. Let's go. All right. So to give you an idea of the percentages, they're all pretty... Uh, actually, that's not true. Uh, Techies was the one outlier here. He actually had the highest win rate of that group with 53%. Uh, Tinker, 48% win rate. Drow is not on that list, sorry. Lone Druid, 48% win rate as well. Drow was below them at 47 and Arc Warden the lowest with 46.39%. Techies over... How many games have people bought that on Techies? Uh, Techies has purchased 7,953. To All give right, you an so idea, this is not just, Arc Warden well, is 26,000. This 26, isn't ticketed games then, right? It is ticketed games. Oh, so it obviously includes the old eggs. That's true. I didn't think about that. That is true. Oh, of course. So the ones that got changed, because the old Techies eggs was really good. Yeah, that's true. And Arc Wardens was always terrible. It was either the the old um, You got Rune lucky, Forge, which, all right? Drow is on there, the for old God's Rune sake. Forge, How is Drow and... bottom two? I should have... Because you, you, bought, you bought eggs on Drow when you had to because you were getting fucked by an illusion hero, and then it was still hard, hmm. right? Okay. So I think that makes sense. But actually, yeah, Arc Wardens were always bad. Techies was good. Londra's is good in the right games. Yeah, checks out. Three to two. All right, last week's question. I'm going to put up the answer here in a second. Last week's question was, which hero has the lowest win rate when picked last? Da-da-da-da! Dawnbreaker! It's actually shocking. <laughs> So out of 125,000 ticketed games since May of 2012, Dawnbreaker has a win rate of 35.7% in 56 games. Obviously a small sample size, but that is a very low win rate for a very good hero, I would argue. Uh, most last picked hero is TA, surprisingly. Uh, the highest win rate last picked hero is TA as well, with 70%. Oh, that's Bane, Shannon. Huh? It says Bane. What do you mean it says Bane? Where? 
on, the on your image. Oh, yes. I'm reading off of uh, an interesting. They gave me two. Which one's correct? Probably the Bane one, because TA can't both have 55% win rate and 70 at the same time. Oh. That would be really weird. Okay. SAP, you wrote it wrong for me. That's not my fault. That's one less point for SAP for this segment. <laughs> Uh, they need you to work for them. They need proofreaders. That's true. I, Make sure I you have. apply. I, I guess I didn't read the graphic fully. Uh, so <laughs> shout out to, oh man, I don't know this person's name. Uh, it's a Cyrillic's character, TX. I don't know what that first letter is. It looks like an A-ish, ATX we'll call him, who said Dawnbreaker, correct answer. Uh, nice. And Cinderin said Pudge, which has a 50% win rate and the 55th highest pick rate for the last pick and i said meepo which has a 55 percent win rate yeah. and it's the 10th highest so gg you won that one what's the highest find out next Did week tell you that no oh okay uh so next week's question another shout out to the same guys last week joel isaiah who did his first question was great so his second question will he be able to do better which first picked hero has the highest win rate so again, the, oh, the hero matters, and if no one is correct, it'll be checked which of the written heroes has the highest win rate among them. So type in your answers in the comments of the YouTube video with hashtag SAP Esports and then the hero name. So which first picked hero has the highest win rate? I'm going to have to look at the hero list again. I have a couple of candidates. All right, I'm going to just stick with strength every time with these, okay? Okay. So let's see. Too bad Primal Beast is not in the game. First pick. Uh, I'm going to go Marcy. It's not that many picks because it's a new hero, but I think she's broken. Our win rate isn't that crazy so i don't know but the thing is first pick hero win rates can't be that high either right so even if marcy's is like 53 percent or 52 she might actually be the highest hmm. uh my gut says io io first pick oh, that's pretty good yeah okay um but it's probably because it had so many phases or of dota when it was just crazy good hmm. um but it might also be a lot of teams picking it that don't play it well enough to justify. I don't know. I'll just stick with my gut. I'll say Io. Okay. That is a good answer. I was thinking Io or Chen as my two. It's a good guess. Probably. All right. So thanks again, SAP. Type in your answers, and we'll see what the answer is next week. Next topic is Riyadh Masters has finished Cinderin. And I yes. got to watch a few of those games. Uh, I was surprised that the finals were not best of five. That was the only surprising thing about the tournament. But yeah, That's pretty unusual. Uh, PSG LGD wins it 2-0 against Team Spirit. And they played them total four times. So it's a rematch of last TI, if you're just tuning in after five years under a rock. Uh, they won all four games, and all four were stomps. LGD looked... They did not look like the fourth place team of the China region for the DPC. They looked... In mm -hmm. TI form. Yeah. You agree? Yeah, I mean, I, I still think so. Something that people say, right, is that LGD is the best team 364 days of the year. And that's kind of how I feel about it, too. <laughs> I just think, on average, this has been the best team in the world for two years, in my opinion. Um, so I do think they're due a TI win or another major win here um, if things go well in Arlington. But yeah, it, it's an incredible team. They're just, they're just so fucking good. So I can't say I'm surprised they stumped the finals, honestly. I, I don't think I go into a series currently on LAN with LGD where I'm like, this is going to be really close or LGD are going to lose. Like I always favor them a decent amount. It's like I need to be proven wrong before I think they can lose, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, that's how good I think they are. So... Yeah, I can't say I'm surprised. Uh, obviously, there was also a lot of prize money for this, so obviously a lot of motivation for the players. Um, one and a half million dollars for first place for LGD is three times what you get for winning a major, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So That is true. That's um, a lot more money. <laughs> and in addition to that, they had some additional stuff, which I wasn't aware of, um, 
but they had some additional prize money for separate categories. So it wasn't just about winning. There was an MVP award, which gave a hundred grand, which went to Faith Beyond from PSG LGD. So he bags another 100K. Highest hero damage went to Yuragi for 25K. Highest hero healing went to Misha for 25K. And best interview went to Misha for 25K. Wow. Um, so he bagged another 50 grand from healing a lot and being on the mic. Okay, I didn't hear about that one. That's uh... <laughs> Best interview. That's very subjective, but Time I Time like to get it. media training now, players. You could make 25 grand from being on the mic for two minutes. That's a pretty good hourly wage. That's true. That is the most money you'll make in a minute probably ever in your life, except if you win the finals of TI. Indeed. So, uh, so yeah, LGD first, Team Spirit second, OG and Secret tied for fourth, third, fourth. Uh, we can talk quickly about Secret. Obviously, they had a stand-in for Ice Ice Ice, and it was Resolution. And they played looked, very well. They looked better than they did previously. So now there's questions of, will they replace Ice 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 with Resolution? Probably too early to tell. Mm -hmm. um, but they're obviously a team that is not qualified for TI, and they're going to have to go through the qualifiers because they didn't make the major either. Um and then there's I guess. questions about OG as well. Um, with, I think there's been screenshots of Seb. We should have mentioned this in the previous segment, but yeah. of him playing a bunch of support heroes. So people are, you know, guessing the fact that maybe Misha doesn't get a visa again. So Seb will have to play again, <laughs> which would yeah. be that. Sadly, seems pretty likely because I don't think Seb would spam that much support unless mm. uh, it was something coming up. Yeah. So it's either that or he's making a new team. I think the stand-in thing is more likely. Um, but yeah, we talked about the winners. I feel like we should just quickly also mention which teams uh, did not do as well as expected. You know, out of Europe, Tundra come in and they only win two games and it's against the local, uh, the local qualifier team D-Boosters. So Tundra, once again, did not look great on land. I say once again, they got third the major, right? That was like their best land performance so far. Uh, but this time around, they were just outmatched by Spirit, LGD, and Secret in their group. Um, and in the other group, you had Team Liquid and TSM get the bottom two slots. And then, yeah, that was that was basically it. So not the best showing uh, from Tundra. And again, Liquid kind of, it's still eluding them to get a really good placement on LAN, right? I don't think they've had one yet with this roster. They won an online event, a pretty big one, the ESL Germany one, I think. Um, but aside from that, the Liquid team just isn't... They're just not hitting it on LAN, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, I, I agree. That, I thought that's who you were going to be talking about, not Tundra on LAN. Because uh, yeah. online Liquid have been... It's like polar opposite versus LAN. So not I don't know sure if it's the, the pressure that gets to them or if they're like... But there, there's definitely... There is a clear difference for both of these teams, in my opinion, on average. Like Tundra have their days and they have their tournaments. So like the major, the third place finish was obviously a good result. I'm not going to say that that was terrible. Um, but on average, Tundra's and Liquid's land performance, I do feel like are weaker than their online ones. And unfortunately, you would love for it to be the other way around, right? As long as you qualify, you want to peak when it matters the most. Mm -hmm. And that's just not been the case for those teams yet. So we'll see. Uh, TSM is a different, uh, I guess, kind of maybe a similar story. Like they got second at the major, which was a great result. But uh, aside from that, their land results have also not been too great so maybe that was a one-off where they did amazing well they also had or maybe a, this was a one-off where they did poorly they had, they had a, a stand in here right well they had a rough uh dpc right uh, did they yeah they had a rough dpc they didn't no, have a stand, no, no stand they were full roster right? yeah. yeah they were full roster. they had a really bad uh, ever since the yeah, major just not in that good just form right now not great yeah 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 okay and last topic before we go on to the mailbag because it's been a long time since we've done that uh karaoke has I don't want to say broken his own record, but I guess that is technically correct. How it is every time. He has now officially played all the heroes again. This has happened many a time. Uh, he picked Dawnbreaker in a match recently against PSG LGD, and now he's played literally every hero in an official match, which is extremely impressive. Of course, a lot of people watching or listening don't remember that he actually started as a mid player. I mean, the first hero that I remember him playing was Doom. Uh, and he was a mid player at the time, so he has played a shit ton of Dota. Basically, First hero I remember Kuro for is Queen of Pain. I think hmm. back in Dota One, he was like a mid dominant player. 
I think there was a phase in Dota 1 when the two strongest mids of Europe were Dendi versus Kuro um, for a while. I think Kuro was playing on Mouse Sports at the time. And Dendi was on... Was it called Navi yet then? He was playing on a team called Walker Gaming at one point, I think. It's a long time ago. I'm so old. Um, but yeah, it's a super cool stat. I think what actually happened was that Kuro just is a very versatile player and has just played a shitload of different stuff randomly over time. And then at some point it was pointed out on Reddit, yo, Kuro has played every hero in CM apart from these three or four. And then <laughs> either he read it or his team did and they told him. And I think he just made it like a challenge for himself that he wants to uh, to keep that top spot and be the first to play every hero all the time. And he's so, pretty fortunate. He's literally the only player that has done it. He's pretty fortunate so. that all these new heroes coming out uh, can be played position five as a big fat strengthy. Yeah. Now the question is, Primal Beast, what does he consider now? Because he got nerfed. Is he now more of a support than he was? He's position trash. Um, okay, so but he if he gets him. buffed, he can be played in a lot of roles, including five. Okay. So. The hero is just not very good right now, in my opinion. But he got mega nerfed, so that's what happens. But yeah, cool stat uh, for Kuro, obviously. Uh, he's also a player who... I'm not sure how much people know this, but Kuro cares a lot about legacy. Uh... I think it's the primary driving force that motivates him to keep going, even when he doesn't have the best performances or his team isn't doing too well. He's not really taking that many breaks. He just really wants to, you know, he wants to be remembered as one of the greats. And I think he still feels like he can get uh, another big tournament win or two with Nygma. Mm. So, and obviously his dream was to be the first player to win uh, TI twice, which is not possible, obviously, but he was close. He was close to being the first, but he wasn't the first. So that probably bothers him. But Very competitive young man. Old man, yes. maybe. Very, very good at the game. All very right. Wise. Let's do two questions. Uh, first sure. one is a question from Paul Lovett. Uh, he actually asked this a long time ago, and I answered him directly because it was a time-sensitive one. He says, I'm going to a Persian restaurant for the first time for my birthday. Do you have any recommendations for epic dishes? And then he linked me the place. Uh, so I figured I'd bring up a few dishes that I love from mm -hmm. Persian cuisine. Uh, the most standard one that is guaranteed everybody that eats meat to like is the kebab. There's two types. There's kubide, which is like, a sp I forget what kind of spices they put on it, but it's, it's basically just uh, ground beef kebab. It's the one that mm -hmm. people tend to like more for some reason. I think it's good, but not amazing. It's like the cheap kebab. The the good kebab is is with lamb. It's called barg. I mean, the it could be lamb, but in the U.S., it's not really. We don't eat that much lamb. Oh. But it's filet mignon kebab, and it's fucking oh s tier. That good. And he put that sounds good. I think it's pronounced sum sumac in the English. I only know the the way you say it in Farsi, which is somal. But put that all over it. Oh, it's so good. So good. That's a great spice. And then a few stews uh, or other dishes that I really like. One is called Fesenjun. It literally looks like a plate of diarrhea. Uh, very appetizing I've had that looking. One. You have had <laughs> that's that. That's not one. a joke. I think I've had that. <laughs> Wait, one. diarrhea or Fesenjun? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. It wasn't a joke. I think I've had the meal. I'm pretty sure I've had that course. So this is a stew that's made of pomegranate juice, walnuts. And they usually put so chicken cool. in it, but I like it with meatballs personally. I don't like bone in my stews personally, but that one is like, it's a very interesting, it's my favorite stew by far. Uh, and then my favorite rice is called Albalu Polo. It's cherry rice. It sounds weird. Cherry rice. It's so fucking good. Uh, yeah, I don't know how, like, typically Iranian rice has like saffron in it. Um, yeah. This is... S tier rice. Nikki loves this rice too. And then the one that I like, I don't love it, but I think it's very good that a lot of people bring up. It's called Gorma Sabzi. This one looks like a pile of vomit. So you can get the diarrhea or the vomit, depending on what you're feeling like. Uh, this one, let's see, what is it made of? It's considered the national dish of Iran. I didn't know that. It has green onion, parsley, cilantro, terra. There's a lot of random shit. Kidney beans, dried lamb. Or dried lime and lamb. Uh, okay, that doesn't really give too much information. It looks disgusting, but it's it's quite good. It's quite good. So I'd recommend that. I think... You I ate think Iranian only, food without me. 
That was really sad. I think I've only been to an Iranian restaurant one time, and it was at an event, and you weren't there. Yeah. Uh, we went there. It was a day before I arrived, by the way. Oh, was it actually? Yes. <laughs> I think it was, uh, so it was in Stockholm, right? We found a restaurant or something. No, it was one of I the DPCs, so. like, the day yeah, before I arrived or something. Uh, it was in Stockholm, yeah. Um, and... I liked it. I th I don't remember exactly what I had, but the stew thing that looks like diarrhea just really resonated with me. That sounded familiar. Uh, and I thought it was pretty good. I don't think it was my favorite. I think something that, um, just in my very limited experience, either Middle Eastern cuisine or Eastern European cuisine does very well is, is salads. I actually think um, I had Lebanese, uh, a Lebanese salad before, which was absolute banger i forgot what it's called we went to a lebanese restaurant at some point in romania with kyle he recommended the place he's very good at recommending food places kyle is uh not who wins tournaments but he knows his food um i, I forgot what that was called it was very very good um and yeah the, the other thing the thing that i remember the most from the iranian place we went to was actually the dessert and you were like iranian cuisine can't make desserts i think that was basically your wording like the desserts aren't good was what you said. They, I, I mean, I'm true? biased because I think they have the best uh -huh. food of all cuisines. They have the worst mm -hmm. desserts. They're fucking disgusting, and I get mad yeah. every time I talk about them. So, do you remember what dessert I had? I remember that you, like, Moxie had, you. like, the ice cream. Yeah, I had ice cream as well. The disgusting ice okay. cream they make in Iran. I feel like if people don't know the cuisine and you ask people to mention two ice cream flavors that are unexpected, I think literally zero people on the planet would guess either of the ones they made. Is it pistachio? Pistachio one? No. Okay, I don't remember. What were it they? was walnut, mm. and the other one was saffron. <laughs> saffron? Because oh. <laughs> this. It was pretty good. It was very unusual. Like I've never had either of those flavors before. Um, Dude, but they something it was, about it was cool. I love trying new food, so it was it was a cool the experience. The Persian desserts are so fucking bad. Like they almost never have. Sh There's one that I like that's like a honey based thing, but usually they don't have like any sugar. There's one. It's shaped like it's brown and it's shaped like a shamrock. I know Iranian people know what I'm talking about. I don't know the name. It. Leg this is not an exaggeration. It literally tastes like you just scooped up a bunch of dirt and just stuck it in your mouth. Same texture, same taste. It's fucking inedible, and people love it. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I. I thought, I thought the ice cream was pretty good, though. I have to say, mm -hmm. a pleasant surprise. All right, second question is from Guitar Strings. Recommends to play Northgard. It's an RTS. Uh, his mailbag question is, how do you pronounce Sindarin's real name? Ols Lunghold Nielsen. Jesus Christ. Slower. Go ahead. Slower. Your turn. Trolls Lunghold Nielsen. I could, I, to this day, I still can't say your first name. So, Pols, you probably do the last Pols, name. Lunghold <laughs> Nielsen. Oh, the, mid, the middle name wasn't that bad. I'm surprised you did that one as well as you did. I guess Holt is kind of. Lunghold? Lingholt. Lingholt. Nielsen. Nielsen. Not bad. Not bad. Pulse. Not bad, Chan. I can't say, God, your fucking <laughs> first name. It makes me sound like an ogre. <laughs> I can't say it without sounding just fucking dumb. Uh, just call me trolls or send. It's fine, Shannon. Yeah, no I, worries. It's... You always call me send. I think you never call me by my name. That is correct. That is very accurate. Uh, how much time do we have? could do this last one if you want more. Sure. Uh, this question is from a scorpy who asks what do you think makes dota popular in a country it never got popular in japan and korea despite a strong gaming culture and the nexon championships for korea it remained popular in china despite recent rise of mobile moba games in the u.s some people have moved on from han over time but dota seems to have been dwarfed by lol in SEA and CIS, it seems like even the average non-gamer has heard of Dota. So I, I would say, at least for SEA, the big thing is land cafes. I think that has a huge influence on what games mm -hmm. people play. U.S., people generally have their own systems. And I think U.S. is more console-based than any other country, I would argue. Um, I don't know why League would be more prevalent than Dota specifically. And then, yeah, the rest is kind of unknown territory for me, at least. 
I, mean, I, I have a pretty, I have a guess basically. And I think like you said, a lot of it has its roots in, in land cafe culture, right? Especially in SCA and CIS. Uh, at the time there was a lot of, I, I guess it's like faded a bit, but land cafe culture, I, I, I always think of uh, the Southeast Asian countries and Eastern Europe when I think of land cafe culture. We had a bit in Denmark, but never very much. And what it usually comes down to that that becomes a thing is uh, usually accessibility of high-end machines. Like, can people afford it? Do you have a computer at home? If you don't and you want to play video games with your friends, you go to a cafe instead, which is really cool. I, I really support land cafes as a concept. I think it's really fun. Um, so for... With accessibility to games at the time, right? Like we're, if we're talking back to like 2005, which is probably when most people or a lot of people that still play Dota uh, started playing Dota and like kind of spread it there. Um, what games did you play in LAN cafes? You played Counter-Strike and you played Warcraft 3, right? Those were probably the two biggest for most of Europe at least and probably for a decent chunk of Asia too. Probably not China, but because uh, I don't think they had Counter-Strike. They have... Uh... Um, Oh shit! They had something called Crossfire at some point. Crossfire. <laughs> um, God. But yeah, in so so in Russia, right? If you're if you're in a land cafe and the games you play are Warcraft and Counter Strike, obviously, and uh, if you have a lot of people playing Warcraft and Dota becomes big, then Dota will also become big in the cafes. And then you add on top of that that Russia had some really good competitive teams, right? Like Virtus Pro historically had some great results. Uh, Navi. Obviously, in Dota 2, makes a really big difference that the first championship team is from the region. Um, I think the reason it didn't take off that much in Korea is honestly timing. I don't think it's because Nexon didn't have enough money or did a poor job. They were just too late. Mm. So on the flip side, like if you compare that to the land history thing with land cafes and stuff, what happens in Korea is that probably the average person in Korea is probably... I'm just guessing here. I think there's less land culture than there is in the other regions. I think people more often have their own home machine that they will play on. And League had been huge for so long, and they established such a foothold when Dota started moving in there that it was too late. I think if Dota had a similar entry into Korea back in Dota 1, it would have been huge there too. And that's why it's big in China, because... Similarly, in China, Warcraft 3 just became a really, really big game, uh, not only because of Dota, but also they had some of the greatest of all time in the regular Warcraft 3 game, right? I think, are both Moon and Lin from China? Hmm? What? Uh, it's two of the players. No, so Moon is actually Korean. That's surprising. Uh, I think Lin is Chinese. Isn't he? No, he's also Korean. What the hell? Okay. Okay. Does that put a hole in your big well, that argument goes out here? The way. Didn't, didn't China have some really good Warcraft 3 players? I don't remember. I'm just remembering the wrong I don't ones? remember the names of any Warcraft 3 players at this stage. I could have fucking sworn Lin was from China, but it says he's Korean. I trust Liquipedia with my life, Shannon, always. Never doubt Liquipedia. True. So you don't think a lot of it had to do with lack of marketing in certain areas or any area? Uh, like, do well, you think, think marketing is more important in certain countries, maybe? Like the US? I, I think marketing is super important. I just think in, in the Korea example, you're just fighting an uphill battle against a giant game that has had so much marketing already and has such a strong foothold that if you're going to beat that, you need more than the Nexon League. So I think it was a good attempt, but I think if you want to compete with League in Korea, you need to make some serious draw, uh, mm -hmm. way more than they did. And I think you look at something like the Nexon League, it's a pretty, it was a, for the, for the time and for how small the game was in Korea, I think it was a decently sized production in League. And you just look at the viewership, you look at the support for it, and it's a business, right? If it doesn't seem feasible, you're not going to keep throwing money into a hole. So I think they just gave up very quickly and pulled the plug on that. Uh, I think they ran two or three seasons, and that was it, because um, they didn't see the potential. Whereas in the other regions, again, yeah, marketing is a huge part of why League has got a foothold in so many countries as it does. I think Dota has... The, the regions where Dota is successful has way less to do with marketing, right? It was just a timing thing of when the game came out and that it became popular among the generation. And then 
obviously then people teach their younger brothers and sisters to play and then they teach their friends to play at school and then it kind of like keeps going right so i think dota is more by chance and league is more by design if that makes sense yeah. that those games got big um and league obviously ran the tail kind of like the tailwind of dota right the reason league could become big was that dota did otherwise riot would have never even made the game to begin with true so yeah it all traces back to there A but yeah i of... think marketing is hugely important and can get you so far i think in some countries I... do you think do you think league could ever be overtaken by dota in korea i just i just don't see it you mean I back then see. yeah I, I don't think nexon could have done anything like, I mean, there's they could always, have never overtaken. There's always they could have gotten more of a foothold, but League is so big in Korea. It's if it's we had tough. neutral items back then, mm -hmm. that's the real money maker right there. That's what they were what. missing. That's why they put them in. The feedback <laughs> that Nexon got was, "You need more RNG in your game, or we won't play." It. That's right. That's uh, good. Yeah, a lot of variables, a lot of if ands or whatever. Yeah. Um, who knows? It's a good question, though. Yep. Uh, I will say, as a final comment on this, I do think Valve should do more marketing, but I don't think Korea is where you go. Uh, but I definitely think you could make the game more popular in certain ways than just letting the game carry itself if you want to. You know, one way to do it that doesn't seem like is expand the custom game scene. Well, they, I mean, I guess in a way they did try to expand the Dota... A little... Oh, the... the, the ad, right? With both Underlords and Artifact, they kind of attempted to expand the universe, like League has done with... No, I'm talking about uh, the arcade. Yeah, I know I know what you're saying. I'm just saying, like, I, I was saying Valve has actually kind of tried to expand the on the IP, right? Yes. Their attempts just failed. So it's not that they didn't try. The attempts just weren't eh, that great. I think they failed and then right. didn't fix what they did to ensure that they wouldn't fail again. Yeah. They, I think that's they just sad. pulled out real fast both times, which is... And what is it League sad. has now? They have Teamfight Tactics, and then they have... They have a lot. They have um, Valorant, Teamfight Tactics, uh, League of Legends. They have the mobile League of Legends. They have, Does Valorant like, have any IP from League? No, but it's, it's technically, I think, the same universe still. Okay. But not, there's nothing directly from League. Is the mobile game out? What's, was it supposed to be called Wild Rift or something? Yeah. That, is that one out? I believe that one's out... And then they're making a fighting game that should be out soonish. Yeah. Uh, the card game, uh, Runeterra. Oh, Runeterra. That's right. That was the one I was forgetting. Yeah, Runeterra and TFT are the two big ones, right? Well, I'd say Valorant, but you're saying directly using directly using Lee characters. Yeah. So. Yeah, TFT's made a resurgence, actually. So. Yep. Okay. Uh, that brings us to the end of the episode. Thank you for the questions, everybody. Uh, that we're out of questions now. Send so your questions. If you have more, use the patron. Use the Discord or the Patreon uh, messaging system. Uh, okay, I, Windows just made a sound. The next episode is supposed to be in a week, but Arlington Major starts in exactly a week, so we might have to record a day or two earlier. Maybe we get a guest. Uh, I haven't decided, but it's probably going to have to be earlier than usually scheduled or we can record a little bit later and then you can have a guest there that's true that is possible i guess it depends on what my schedule will be i don't have or both or we record early and then we do a regular episode there as well with a guest can i ask you a, a real question no only fake questions allowed that is kind of a fake question okay if we had ice frog on the podcast yeah how many views do you think we'd get over a million. You think so? Yeah. And if it was Gabe Newell, you think it would be less, right? Yeah. How but much I think less? either way, it would easily be our most watched episode, so, by like a factor of 10. Gaben, <laughs> Gaben would be 100K plus, you know, six figures. And I was going to say the same For thing. Sure. Ice Frog would be over a million. Yeah. Now, what if, does it matter if he shows his you face? You need to promote before it actually gets to one mil, someone in chat says? No way. I mean, no we'll way. just have Valve do it. They'll promote it. <laughs> They, do you think that he would have to show his face to get the million? No. Do you think adding a face would add more views, though? Yes. Okay. Man, you're actually... That would, because people would love to see, you know, that's kind of, there's so much mystery around Ice Frog, right? But even without a face, there would be so much interest in that episode. Why is it you're not able to answer the questions like this normally? But today, it's just what? very straightforward, yes. No, there weren't like... 
Well, if you consider this option, I don't know you can be friends with me, Hime. Why are we friends, actually? All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, good luck at the major, Cinderin. Oh, wait, you were invited. Until next time, Suns fan Cinderin. Signing mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we say things that don't mean anything. Subscribe. Subscribe.